Eu não vou ter uma palavra que tem que falar, eu tenho que falar, eu tenho que falar, eu tenho que falar, eu tenho que falar, Okay, so Whitewater, which is the worst place on the river? Is it Hans? Hans has had a rash of private boat deaths in the last several years. Hermit, you just saw in action. Crystal has a bad reputation, well deserved. But actually, more casualties in the river have occurred off the boat beach in Phantom Ranch. And the spectacular trio that, this is two years ago as well, I hope more this Baptist Church group, um, three members of which decided they had to swim across the Colorado. Within an hour. And uh, why they decided is still murky. We've been trying to figure out now, where did the idea come from. But they hiked as a group down the South Kaidad Trail where just before it reaches the tunnel into the Black Bridge, you can teach Some of you might know this. You can detour it right in here and go down to the beach. And there's that little beach down in that area right there that you'll end up in. You have to pass a sign that says, dangerous currents, swimming not permitted. And then you have to ignore that sign. And what they did was head on down here somewhere in this area. Three of them dived in. Actually, there's a rumor that there was a fourth one they all four dived in, but the number four decided no way and turned around right away and came back. We haven't figured that out yet. But all three headed down this river, trying, they, their plan was just swim across the other side. And uh, they used downstream ferry angles for those of you who know about ferry angles, and they swam downstream and they just headed out of control and freezing very quickly. For those of you who have done swims in April in, in uh, Colorado, it, it takes less than a minute for your muscles the actual biochemistry of your muscles to start failing and making you weaker, weaker, weaker. It's not a core temperature issue, it's just your muscles don't do what they're supposed to do. But they ended up down here in this eddy, as many people have prior to me, who uh, went swimming here and inadvertently got swept downstream, into this eddy, which earned a name way back, I don't know, about 70 years ago, 80 years ago, called the Devil's Spittoon. Uh, so all three of them drowned. The next most dangerous, actually the next place is even more dangerous, and this is the foot of the Bright Angel Trail right where, you know, Pipe Creek hits the river. And uh, those are kind of the breakdown here, some of the deaths of Phantom, and this is the next one at Pipe Creek. This is the breakdown of deaths that have happened here. And we, uh, you know, the reason this happens fairly clear, most of the swimmers are naive and they actually do try to swim. They go in the water either here in the eddy or as some of you might know, there's a nice little cove right here to get in, but just a few feet out from that cove, the current's going by and it's obvious that the current is actually a tongue. It's not just current, it's feeding into a real rapid and no one has managed to make it all the way down this rapid and climb out and say, well, that was close. Some people have made it partway and escape, but very few. So the death toll here is really high. We kind of think that the sign should be a little more aggressive, this, this particular sign, instead of saying swimming not permitted, which can be interpreted by somebody to say, well, that means you don't need a permit to swim. <laughs> so, so no swimming, swimming prohibited, whatever. Something more aggressive. You will die out there. Maybe put the list of names of people yeah, how many? On the sign. So, Whitewater. What are the big issues here? X number dead. There are a lot of rapids, a lot of places to fall over, a lot of places to get in trouble. Some of them aren't very hard, but then if you fall asleep at the wheel. But the big issue, um, there were drownings before Glen Canyon Dam ever got built. But when Glen
Grand Canyon is full of water emerges from the dam at about 47 to 48 degrees from the foot of this dam. The old river, you know, this, this water is taken from about 250 feet down from full pool to feed the penstocks. That water is usually 47, 48 degrees. By the time it gets to Lee's Ferry, it's still 48 degrees, and it takes a long time to warm up, especially if not summer. In summer, in the old days, the river was silty and could be over 80 degrees, which really changes the physiology of a swim. Yeah, that's why the chub make it. How long to get hypothermic? Well, there's different kinds of hypothermia. <laughs> to affect your muscles, it takes less than, you know, you're in rapidly moving water that completely strips away the barrier water around you non-stop. So less than one minute, your arms can be too weak to do what you used to be able to do a minute earlier, but three or, three or four minutes and you're in trouble. Um, for, for total loss of performance, when you become a zombie, it's longer. But remember, this, these, most of these things were figured out in pools of water, not in rapidly moving, rapid type water. But what happens with jump on this? What happens with cold water is really dramatic. Yeah. Okay, so there's this thing called cold shock response, and we all know what that is. If you don't, don't know the term, but if you stick your foot into ice cold water, even if it's just your toe, that cooling of the skin, the surface area of the skin, triggers an involuntary gas, right? We've all experienced that. It's like, oh, and so you get this huge involuntary gas. The next thing that follows is reduced there's a hyperventilation. The, the boys that drowned uh, swimming the river, they're trying to get down to the Silver Bridge. That's what happened. Um, also, cold water will, will reduce your breath holding capacity by about two thirds. You can't hold your breath as long in ice cold water as you could in the bathtub when you're a kid. It's just, it's just freezing. You get the ice cream headache. The other thing when you fall in cold water, you get elevated blood pressure, heart rhythm abnormalities, heart attack, or stroke. So, why is this important? When we go down to the list of how people have drowned in the Colorado, we know that the vast majority are males. 80% were not wearing life jackets. That's the people who hike in there. And then 57 of those were non-river runners, deliberate swimmers, crossers, accidental swimmers, and then mysterious drownings. But the cool shot we want to just emphasize for river runners, 12 drownings of river runners were wearing life jackets. And we think that the cold shock was the, uh, uh, the biggest culprit in that if you fall into the, uh, the rapid, like at Crystal, which is a big, long rapid, and you freak out, you hyperventilate, you have a big gasp in the middle of a wave, and you aspirate, and then you continue to hyperventilate, and you aspirate again, that's how people will drown. And uh, if you have risk factors for heart disease, you're a smoke, you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you're diabetic, you have a family history, you're an older guy, yada, yada, <laughs> those guys are risk for heart attacks. So, the big thing about take-home messages from the river, really, uh, it's, a, it's a, fortunately, it's a, a big, safe river, even after all, seeing all this stuff, the reality is it's pretty darn safe. But the big people who are at risk for problems if they fall in the cold water, if they have a bad heart. Bad heart and cold water don't mix. For people who are, who are at risk for heart disease, we talked about some of those, they should be stress tested before they go into Colorado, because the last thing you want to do is have Crystal do your stress test for you, or the Bright Angel Trail. <laughs> the other thing, you don't want to wait beyond Waist deep into the current without a life jacket. You know, people have been fooled all the time by that. Getting caught in the river currents and the eddy lines and being pulled under. Don't swim in the river, at least, uh, you know, if you don't have a life jacket. Um, non swimmers and those prone to panic should consider a motorized uh, trip, probably, or, or power trip, or opt out. So, you know, you can decide you want to go. If somebody's really, really afraid of water, they can walk around the rapids, treat the rapids, get on a big motor rig, or maybe not go at all because they're going to be at higher risk. So the biggest lesson of all is, is wear your swimsuit. Life jackets may be optional, uh, but sw or swimsuits may be optional, life jackets are not. <laughs> Sorry about that. Moving right along, and see if you can guess what the next, next topic is. This is a sing-along. 